Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today I'm building a computer for a customer. I'll walk you through the process step by step. If you want to build or upgrade your computer, the first thing you should think of is the processor and the motherboard. The processor is the brain of the computer, while the motherboard, as the name suggests, is the mother of all components. So all peripherals, interface cards, and even the processor are all attached to it. For this build I'll use the Asus Z270 Tough motherboard, which was on sale for about $178. I'll also be using an Intel i7-7700 CPU with it. By the way, the CPU is another name for processor. CPU stands for Central Processing Unit. The i7 here in Canada is a bit expensive, but I managed to get this one on sale for $375. Of course, you can get a cheaper processor such as the i5 or i3 uh, for much less, but if you are into gaming or heavy video editing, I would suggest getting an i7. This chart shows the difference of benchmark speed between the i7-7700 and the i5-7500 processor. I'll put this website link in the description below. Please note that most of the time the i5 will run games just fine. This system will use 16 GB memory. Later on you can upgrade that to 32 GB if you need, but 16 GB is enough for now. According to this motherboard manual, one memory chip will go into A2 slot. These are the memory slots, and here you put the processor, and here the video card. The memory should be compatible with the motherboard. This board takes DDR4 type memory, 288 pin. So let's install the memory. Press down until it clicks. Now let's install the processor. This processor comes with stock fan and the thermal compound. The CPU can't be overclocked, but if you are in, into overclocking, let's say to, to get into heavy gaming, then you need a different type of uh, cooling solution, such as this one, the EVO 212 cooling fan. Take your time to install the processor. Make sure you are grounded or wear anti-static gloves. Move the protection cover. Push the lever down to unclip it, then open the load plate. Don't touch the socket or bottom of the processor. Hold the processor with the thumb and index fingers, make sure the socket notches align with the processor notches. Close the load plate, press down on the load plate, close, and engage the socket lever. Installing the processor fan is quite easy. Push down on the top of each of the fasteners while holding the fan heat sink in place. You should hear a click when pushing down each fastener. Gently pull up on each fastener to make sure all four fasteners are securely attached. 
Connect the processor 4 wire fan cable connector to the motherboard 4 pin CPU fan header. Install the I.O. shield that came with the motherboard. Plug in the power cable coming from the power supply to the motherboard. Plug in the front panel audio, AAFP. Attach the USB power. This lets you use your USB ports. Connect the power switch, reset switch, and disk drive LED according to your motherboard manual. Usually they are combined together on one port. This 8-pin power connector is to power the CPU, and it is also coming from the main power supply of the computer. Now it is time to install the hard drive or solid state drive, this will allow us to have permanent storage in the computer, where we can store our programs and information. Now, we need a video card to transfer the information and video to the screen. Here I will use a mid-range but capable video card, it's the GTX 1060. Video cards need power as well, so we'll connect power to this. Now let's turn on the computer for testing. Everything is running perfect. You will need to install Windows and motherboard drivers uh, that came with the motherboard. If you don't know how, I have a video on that. I'll link it in the description. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or need assistance in building a computer, let me know in the comments section. I'll be happy to help.